There are several types of anesthesia, general, local or regional, and epidural, to mention the best known. This film has been made to explain standard general anesthesia. We will lead you step by step through the entire procedure. Anesthesia is not an end in itself, but an aid. It has three objectives. Avoid pain, induce deep sleep and amnesia, that is to say, a hypnotic state, induce muscle relaxation to make the surgeon's work easier. You will meet your surgeon approximately one month before your scheduled operation, then be sent for anaesthetic consultation to discuss any medical problems you may have mentioned at that time. The anesthesiologist will ask a number of questions concerning your health and explain the anesthesia procedure. Do you take regular medicine? No. Nothing? Are you allergic to anything? Yes, to pollen. Side effects and possible anesthesia-related risks will also be discussed. Such risks depend on three factors, your pathology, the surgery itself, and your medico-surgical background. Anesthesiologists know that general anesthesia is not risk-free and are aware of the problems which may arise following general anesthesia. Although the anesthetic drugs employed may cause post-operative nausea or vomiting, such symptoms usually disappear spontaneously within a day or two. Generally speaking, we can say that safety has improved considerably over the past several years, thanks to an increase in the volume and efficiency of established control methods. Today, at the Geneva University hospitals, there is only one serious anaesthetic accident every four or five years, that is to say, one for every 100,000 operations. Most accidents are generally related to the patient's state of health, which is why anaesthetic consultation is so important. It determines the measures to be taken to ensure the best possible anaesthesia. You may be aware of things during the operation, such as conversations or activities going on around you. This can happen if the anesthesia isn't strong enough. We endeavor to ensure adequate, well-adapted anesthesia. Once everything has been discussed, the anesthesiologist will ask if you agree. Do you agree to the use of blood products? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? No. Good. Your anesthesiologist will visit you the day before your operation. He will ask a few questions and examine you, keeping in mind conclusions made during consultation. Your anesthesiologist may advise, or you may ask for, a sedative or relaxant before transfer to the operating room. You will be taken care of by your anesthesiologist's medical team in the operating room, where they will undertake a series of procedures. They will verify your identity and the type of operation you are to undergo. Welcome to anesthesia. Hello, doctor. Hello. I'd like to verify your identity again. Your name, please? Patrick Martin. Patrick Martin. I'll just check the bracelet. Good, okay. This is your file? Perfect. Hello, my name is Stephanie. I'm a nurse anaesthetist. I'll be setting up the monitoring system as well as assisting the doctor. They will then set up the monitoring procedures for bodily functions such as heart, blood pressure and respiration during anaesthesia. And they will install an intravenous device, also known as a catheter or peripheral venous drip, to administer various substances throughout the operation. This is necessary for any anesthesia. We will now prepare you for the general anesthesia, Mr. Martin. You begin by breathing into the oxygen mask. It contains nothing but oxygen. Please breathe deeply. Breathe at a normal rate while emptying your lungs. 
Very good. You're doing well. How are you doing? Breathe well. There. The first drug is a powerful pain reliever. If you feel dizzy, just close your eyes and think of something pleasant. We will be with you throughout the entire operation to make sure that everything goes all right. We'll see you when you wake up. Breathe deep. One more time. Very good. Once more. Now I'm injecting a drug into the intravenous catheter, which will slowly put you to sleep. Are you okay? Breathe deep. And I'll see you later. See you later, Mr. Martin. You will fall into a very deep sleep within less than 15 seconds. Once you are deeply asleep and relaxed, intubation can begin. This means that a tube, also known as a catheter, is introduced into the trachea. This protects your respiratory tract, for example, by preventing regurgitation into the lungs. Intubation also helps you to breathe. In fact, anesthesia actually blocks the natural breathing process. Complementary procedures may be performed during surgery, depending on the type of operation, the circumstances, or your medico-surgical background. You remain under your anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist supervision during surgery. Approximately 60 parameters are constantly controlled during a normal operation. Anesthesia is always adapted to the type of operation you undergo. You will be transferred to the recovery room where a medical team will watch over you after surgery. My name's Francis. I'm the recovery room nurse. We'll keep you here with us for a few hours to ensure that everything's all right. Are you in pain? Uh, yes, a little. Okay. If zero is no pain and 10 is maximum pain, can you tell me where you are on a scale of zero to 10? Four or five. Okay. We'll quickly give you something for the pain. Once you are awake and back in your room, you will be taken care of by the analgesic team to help you fight the pain and keep a close eye on you for 48 hours.